I'm not quite sure whether it's her or Pepsi, but you know, I suddenly one day, sometimes Pepsi's my best girl, sometimes. <laughs> The children have a lot of exposure to people that normally they wouldn't and also he's taken us on many trips that normally we would not have been able to go on. Um, and not only that, just in his, his world, I, mean, I always say that we orbit in the Clark orbit. <laughs> we we do. <laughs> you know, this house always just moves, and and if you're in this house, you're definitely in the Clark orbit. He's all the time is coughing, you know. And then I took to you know uh, to England to find out what it is. Then the doctors said that he was suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease. And then I immediately decided to take him to the United States, to John Hopkins. We were waiting for the doctor to come with the result. And when the doctor mentioned that he's not suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease, it's only a a post polio syndrome, Arthur was very, very happy, you know. We all was very happy. And you don't know how happy we were. You can't imagine, you know. To a man who told about two years he's going to finish his life and here he come and say it's nonsense, you know. When people ask me this question, often the quick answer I give is, why do you live in, Seal in Sri Lanka? I answer, 30 British winters. The Ramans deliberately created it to deal with equally nasty creatures. On guard. Yeah. To deal with equally nasty creatures on guard okay miss makeup I, I'm, I'm, this is not my forte but I'll learn that's it it's all stuff you learn okay I wonder which is it it's actually much wonder it is nine feet tall and it's right here next to you yeah <laughs> okay do I look scared or am I intrigued you, you, no. you, you look like you would look <laughs> A wonderful creature, this avian. Action. The crab biome, excellent anything, it 
considers to be trash. Nothing remains on the ground in plain sight for very long. Crab biop takes up anything that it considers to be trash. Nothing remains on the ground in plain sight for very long. Well, you see, I ended Rendezvous with Rama with the phrase, the Ramans do everything in threes. Now, a lot of people thought that I was heading for a sequel then, but I, for years I said, no, no, I just felt that was the right way to end the book. I will never write a sequel to Rendezvous with Rama. But then, <laughs> when this guy came along, he had one or two ideas about engineering and so forth, you know. <laughs> I realized, hmm, yes, if I want to develop this further, and after all, if the Ramas do everything in threes, there may be two more coming, or maybe one's already come. Anyway, the possibilities are there, and so you know, let's look into it. And one thing led to another, and another, and another. Right. <laughs> I got a letter from my agent um, saying that there was someone who had some idea for a science fiction story, and he wanted to work with me. Well. I said, no way, I have too many ideas of my own. And then he said that he was involved with the Galileo project, the space probe to Jupiter. And of course, I've been very interested in Jupiter because Jupiter was the scene of much of the action in the Odyssey series. And so I said, oh yes, I'd like to see this fellow. And so he said, okay, so, you know, at least it won't do any harm to talk to him. I might get some good ideas from him. The most important thing that I have learned from Arthur is the precision of the English language. I tend to be verbose and to, to use five words where two or three will do. And there's some that will argue that all I've done is figure out how to only use four, and I'm still too verbose. But it's been a great experience for me to watch the felicity he has with the English language.